هم الأئمة من بعده وبالتالي فإن هذه الخلافة تعتبر وصية دينية وليست وراثية. But this holy commandment was no protection against a deep divide in Shia belief. Al Qasimiyah Mosque, Baghdad. The shrine of the man who marks the division of Shiism into two strands. It is the tomb of the seventh of the Twelvers Imams, Musa al Qasim, who died here in the year 799. Others, however, dispute his status. They consider the real seventh Imam to be his brother, Ismail. They came to be known as Ismaili Shia. The Twelver Shiites were traditionally um, not interested or did not strive to take political power because they believed that they were waiting for the return of the Mahdi so that at that point the righteous regime would be installed and anything in between would basically be a heresy to rule um, in these lands. But for the Ismaili Shia, there was to be no waiting for the return of the Mahdi. By the late 9th century, their preaching had taken root among the Berber tribes in North Africa. A new movement was on the rise, with its roots firmly in the Shia tradition. لم يقع الاعلان من اول على انها هي حركه تريد اقامه خلافه لا كان اهم شعار هو العدل بين كل المسلمين النصر للمستضعفين يعني كانت في الاساس حركه ذات وجه اجتماعي وبالطبع العنصر الهام هو الحكم لال البيت لنشر العدل In the year 909, in Kairawan, Tunisia, Ubaidullah, a man claimed to be a descendant of Ismail, was declared the caliph of the first ever Shia caliphate. It would be known as the Fatimid, after Fatima, daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, an ancestor of all the Imams. The concept of the Ismaili Caliphate is completely different from the Abbasid Caliphate because of the claim to divine inspiration and divine guidance which the Fatimids put forward. They certainly developed an institution which was theoretically completely different from the Abbasid. The Fatimids now began to expand their state westwards into the Maghrib. But this would lead to a clash with another major Muslim power. And soon, the Islamic world would find itself in a surreal position. By 912, the Umayyad Emirate in Andalusia was over a century and a half old. Ruled from Cordoba by the 8th Emir, Abdurrahman III. After crushing all rebellions and uniting Andalusia, he looked towards expanding southwards across the Mediterranean. The establishment of the Fatimid Caliphate in what is now Tunisia, which was called Ifriqi at the time, meant a big threat for the Mayas in terms of their political control of the Berber polities that existed in the area. To strengthen his position, in 929, 
Abdul Rahman declared the Andalusian Emirate an independent Umayyad Caliphate. Three centuries on from the founding of the title, the Islamic world was now divided between three caliphs, two Sunni and one Shia. The ultimate result of that really was a decline in the value put on the notion of the caliphate itself. So it leads to um, huge rifts, politically speaking, within the community, as well as the, the religious differences that these different caliphates signal. In Baghdad, the suffering of the Abbasid caliphs continued under Turkic military domination. But by the mid-10th century, a new force had emerged. The Buyids, a Persian dynasty, put an end to Turkic control of the Caliphate. Tawalla Banu Buy, wahum Shia, wa ma dalik abqul Khalifa Sunni fi Baghdad. Lish? Lano qalu ida wallena wahad Shia, ma'na ida amar al Jund biqatlina yaqtuluna. ومن الأفضل أن نبقي على هذا السني فإن أمرنا جندنا بقتله فيقتلوه. Worse still was to come for the Abbasids. In 969, a Fatimid army captured Egypt. Three years later, the fourth Fatimid caliph, Al Muaz, abandoned his capital, Mahdiya in Tunisia, and headed east. For the next two centuries, the newly built city of Cairo would serve as the seat of the Shia Caliphate. The Fatimids considered their caliphate universal, so ideally they wanted to expand their power from their original base in North Africa, back into Egypt, on into Syria, and ultimately to encompass the whole Islamic world. They weren't able to achieve that, and what instead happened in the 10th century was the Islamic world became divided between a number of different caliphates. Meanwhile, in the West, a storm was gathering. Christians, uniting under the banner of the cross, were looking eastward to conquer the Holy Lands. The approaching struggle could not have come at a worse time for a divided Muslim world. And for the caliphs who were at their weakest point as they turned to face the Crusades.